Frazier and Miller, the guards. Terry Noel and Hansborough, the rookie of the year up front. None of these players started the last time they met, the 2005 ACC tournament. Devastating losses for both clubs. This telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by the Dish Network. And we are set to go in Chapel Hill. Georgia Tech controls the opening tip. And North Carolina comes out in man-to-man. -man. Georgia Tech, we talked about some of the lineup changes, and among them having Mario West start, more of a defensive player, more looking to distribute it, as opposed to Zam Frederick will come off the bench and play about 25 minutes, according to Paul Hewitt, more energy, better offensive production. Both of them sharing the point this year, and Dickey knocks down the first shot. Rashawn Dickey shooting above 60% from the floor this year. That's number two in the ACC. This is Georgia Tech also in man. Frazier was open for the three pass down in the main they're willing to play hands row man to man without a whole lot of help. The Otis Tarver just guarding him by himself. That hasn't worked very often this year. <laughs> and Carolina ties it. David Noel with the jump shot. Noel averaging nearly 12 points a ball game and the only real veteran on this ball court. And David Noel's been doing a lot of things. The offense has flowed through him. He's actually gotten a bunch of assists over the last four or five games. Clinch, the freshman, got lucky on a bad pass and that one we had a perfect angle on it that looked like it just bounced straight out of bounds but the officials thought it was tipped Roy Williams got his national championship the long elusive crown jewel last year and has done a magnificent job in having this team where he has them considering everything he lost and Anthony Morrow who is the leading three-point shooter in the ACC better than 40 percent hits that three boy you could tell you look at his form his ability to square up and raise up hands for a little eight footer Tyler Hansbrough has learned now not to just set up on the blocks. He's moving a lot more, which makes it difficult for defenses to kind of double team him or really set their defense to deny him the ball. Miller, who's a really good on the ball defender, has the point guard, Mario West. And here's a hook called on Dickey. Now sixth year has not won a game at the Dean Smith Center. Although he is five and seven against Carolina. Yes, he right. is. This, this has been a house of horrors, even with the Final Four team that he had. Well, join the group. It's been that way for everybody, hasn't it? Yes, it has. 20th year of the Smith Center, by the way. Morrow goes in, got the shooter's roll, and Anthony Morrow already has five. Terry, who has been really hot lately, played very well. Miller, not really good at getting his own shot. And Hansborough foul on the way in. And that was the play, Mike, that I was talking about. The offense going through David Noel an awful lot. And he's been finding people. Last five games, he's averaged about six assists. Here's the series overall, and you see the huge advantage in Chapel Hill, but in at home and in neutral site games, Georgia Tech has won three of the last four. That foul was on Mario West, and Hansborough, in addition to everything else, a very good free throw shooter. He had been in the top ten in the ACC, still shooting 75%, and shoots more free throws than anyone in the ACC, almost eight a game. Well, that's a big reason why you work on your free throws. Throws. Yeah, three three points. But to go back to the point about Noel, over the last five games, averaging six assists, he's averaged more than the point guards. So he's really been the conduit to get this offense going. Quality players. Sam Frederick checks in, number 35. Jeremy Smith, number 32. They try to get the ball to Smith, and Rayshon Terry with the pick. Fraser, poor pass, and picked off, but lost out of bounds by Tarver. Fraser in a uh, little bit of a slump as far as an assist man. At one point, three or four games ago, he was number one in the ACC, almost 5.2 assists a game. Now he's got number four. 
committed a lot of turnovers. Noel has this one blocked. And Frederick comes out with it. Boy, Tarver, long arm came out with perfect timing on that one. Frederick forced the shot against Noel, Noel, who's got a nice size advantage against him. See, there's Hansbro starting out look top, and then he'll go low, he'll flash to the ball. Makes it a lot difficult, a lot more difficult for people to guard him, not that it was ever easy. Oh, oh, oh. foul on Lewis Clinch. Let me take a look right here at a close up. Just ooh. let's Clinch. see if this is a fight. They'd have to stop it and yeah. It go was to a bad the, exchange for both. I'm gonna say to go to the judges' cards, <laughs> see who wins this one. Hit button. Wide the delay. Plus, you're giving both players a chance to shake it off a little bit. Hansborough, of course, when we first saw him as a freshman this year, Terry shoots a three, one and done. All he would do is come down and set up in the blocks and was tremendously effective at that. Wow. And here's Clinch, who has really come on after starting the last couple of ball games, and Terry. Goes back the other way and hits. Clinch has been a scoring factor for Georgia Tech. Well, he certainly has. Last two games, averaging 10 points, and more importantly, 8 of 16 from the field. And again, you can see he's pretty much instant offense. Clinch gets it to Tarver, and Tarver is fouled. Crowd thought it was a good block. David Noel picks up his first. Ray Sean Terry getting the crowd involved with a slam. Yes, if you're a flea and you can apply, you might as well go ahead and do it. I think they'll take all comers as long as you're <laughs> yeah, a fan. That's right. As long as you're a fan. That's right. Tarver will go to the free throw line. 6'9 senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. It's the first one. Georgia Tech is a team, not a good free throw shooting club. 66.3%. Well, you look at Georgia Tech and you make a comparison to Carolina. Georgia Tech also lost a lot of folks. Carolina, with their young people, have obviously been able to adjust and find success. And that's what Georgia Tech is looking for. I mean, you talk about a team with one senior, one junior, five sophomores, and six freshmen that Paul Hewitt has to integrate. And he's had some difficulty doing it, but the lineup change of late seems to be the thing that they want, particularly at the point guard. It certainly helped them break that eight-game losing streak. And Rayshon Terry, who in the last five games has averaged almost 17 and a half. Half, hits that jumper. He has four tonight. Georgia Tech going very, very deep. DeAndre Bell gets it to Zam Frederick, and he travels. Frederick has always been a shooting guard. They're trying to make him a point guard. Here's what they lost. Jared Jack went early, the tremendous point guard. Elder and Bynum. I mean, they just lost so much. Shencher was the seven-footer. Muhammad was probably their best athlete. I mean, you combine these two teams, and it's just unbelievable what they lost. And Terry is really hot now. He has six. Ahead to Dickey. Blocked from behind by Terry, and Terry reacts to the foul call. Both of these teams look to get it up and down. You know, I talked to Roy Williams before the game and he says he wants to run but run under control and Georgia Tech also running under control looking for opportunities you know you get out in front of the defense and you get opportunities such as Dickey did good defensive play to force him to get to the line Dickey who is averaging almost 12 and a half points a game Highly rated early in his high school career, hurt a knee, and that lowered his value coming out of Clio, South Carolina. But he uses his body very well. He's got good footwork, as you can see. Loves to run the floor. And that's how he gets those high percentage shots to be second in the conference in field goal percentage. And between he and Jeremy Smith, a couple of great rebounds. Noel, nice. Noel looked like he was going to shoot, 
snaps the pass underneath the hands bro and hands broke fouled after he made the basket and Mike you talked about the fact that Bobby Fraser may be in a, an assist slump one of the reasons is again Carolina continues to go through David Noel we saw it at Maryland where he had a bunch of assists and we're seeing it here where he's the conduit if teams want to play him tight or try to take him away he's going to find open men Hansbrough hits a free throw. He has seven. And it's the heels by Bucket. Full court pressure back the other way as both teams try to dictate the tempo. That's right. This full court pressure really keeps Georgia Tech from flat out pushing the ball up the floor as they did in the last couple of possessions. And Mario West is back in a point guard. Hansbrough gambled. Went for the steal and it cost him as Dickey gets the layup. Dickey has five points. And how strong is Dickey? Hansborough had his hands on that ball and Dickey just ripped it away from him. Knights reach in and steal by Smith. Morrow for three. Rushed that a little bit. Usually his form is a lot more pure than he showed there. Be a reach in foul on DeAndre Bell. Let's check in with Doris. Mike, in the midst of that losing streak, Georgia Tech endured. Jeremy Smith, right after Super Bowl Sunday, decided enough was enough. He called a players only team meeting in the dorm room and essentially said, This, guys, we need to play with more passion, purpose, and accountability. Coach Hewitt can only do so much. It's about us taking individual responsibilities. They're one and one since that point, Lenny. It's been a lot of close losses. They're not far away. Well, it's good that you get a sophomore to step up, Doris, as, as a leader and call that meeting. And there's nobody more aggressive on this team than Jeremy Smith. Averages about seven free throw attempts a game. And, you know, they use the word rugged to describe him. I think that's an understatement right here. He likes to bump and grind. Boy, and he's a good one, too. Second oh, yeah. rebounder in a conference, 8.8. .8. Didn't get to see what he could do last year. Had missed 17 games with a dislocated kneecap and just saying that is painful he still wears a little bit of a brace that's protected Ginyard comes in Sanders had to double clutch because his first effort was blocked and you know when the ball doesn't go in Sanders just has his shoulders slump because he is just such a terrible free throw shooter you really even feel sorry for the young man when he goes to the line well and you know what he's been effective when he hasn't been fouled 18 of his last 30 yeah. he's made from the field but if I'm opposing teams you're right if he gets a layup I'm hacking and force him to earn it on the line he is now 12 out of 33 and again I've mentioned it before when we watched him play he's got to work on getting air under the ball getting more art because every time that I've seen him miss it's primarily hitting the back iron and coming right back at him which means he's shooting a flat shot get it up in the air over the front of the rim there you go one out of two he'll take it and it's the heels by one had to pick up his dribble. Morrow help. There's good ball movement. And a three-pointer knocked down by Clinch, who now has six. Excellent patience by Georgia Tech on that pressure. Lewis Clinch out of Cordell, Georgia. Offensive rebound and a follow. Foul before the shot. picks up his second foul. Well, Carolina's keeping up the pressure on both ends, trying to get this lead back. Not only do they pressure you defensively, but they continue to push the ball, make or miss, explore the defense. And to me, that's quintessential point guard play. If you get a point guard who can push it up the floor after a make or miss, just to see if you got advantages, you do it. And if you don't, you execute. And when the shot clock runs down, you got to beat people off the bounce and create. That was the first of a one and one. Mario West goes underneath. Tarver has his shot blocked by Sanders. That's what Sanders is really good at, playing defense in the middle. And you'd love to see that kid hit three or four free throws in a row because you think it would just break him out. Well, you see right there, he's all ready. He was timed. He kind of hid behind David Noel. Tarver never saw him. And that's what good shot blockers do. They lay in the weeds. <laughs> That's the eighth team foul against Georgia Tech. Carolina has committed two. 
And another missed free throw. Frederick almost dribbled into trouble. Morrow draws the attention of Guignard. Look at a nice hedge out there by Noel just to help out. Frederick. Doesn't stop Frederick. Sam Frederick was a legendary schoolboy scorer in South Carolina. His dad actually started at the University of South Carolina and was a tremendous scorer. Terry off balance, got it anyway. Ray Sean Terry has eight. His scoring average just continues to go up in the late stages of the season. Georgia Tech by two. West can't work his way inside. Score to hoop. Bucket counts and the foul on Marcus Ginyard. I tell you, there's no back down by these Yellow Jackets. Again, just a basic one-on-one -on -one play. You see him cradle the ball and you sort of reach in. And then obviously the strength to get it up on the glass. And that's the thing that's most important. The fact that he had the strength and presence of mind to get it up there on the glass. Fundamentally sound by Anthony Morrow, who by no means is just a three-point shooter. He's the only player in this club to start every game. Goes to the line with seven points here tonight for a three-point play and gets it. 23-18, Georgia Tech. That's the biggest lead in the ball game. And again, Georgia Tech applying pressure as well. Both of these teams looking to find some way to dictate tempo. Also, fun, find a way to separate the opponent from the ball. Wes Miller missed a three. He is a tremendous standstill jump shooter, hitting almost 45% of his shots and had a great look there. DeAndre Bell handling it outside. Morrow now posting up against Terry. Laura Williams really liked his team. Doesn't have to coach him on defense, doesn't have to coach effort. They play very, oh. very hard, and that's a pretty shot. Sam Frederick. Well, he started the first 20 games of the season and was put on the bench in the last two prior to this one. He had career highs in each of those two games. Paul Hewitt told me before the game that Frederick is playing with more energy, maybe playing a lot of minutes, wore him down a little bit. He was never fresh. This one's out of bounds to Georgia Tech. North Carolina usually dominates people on the boards, but Georgia Tech's too good to do that to. And when they shoot well, they're tough. And Billy Tubbs had a fascinating theory when he was at Oklahoma. Defense doesn't matter. <laughs> well, we'll just run up and down court, and we will outscore you. And I think he's got some disciples in today's basketball game. Yeah. This is a story of the game right here, folks. Georgia Tech perfect from beyond the arc. Clinch, Morrow, Frederick really finding the range. Jump shot, tough shot, good defense by Miller. Again, smart play by Fraser, not to force the issue. And the other thing is that the hands grow. It's two for three from the field, but he hasn't gotten as many touches as he probably should. They he sure has. It. But he's getting bumped out of there by Smith, who I mentioned, a very rugged player on both ends of the floor. Fraser, baseline jumper. One and done again as Georgia Tech doing a great job on the boards. Their fourth in rebound margin in the ACC. North Carolina number one, but they're not doing anything on the offensive glass. Bell left alone with that odd looking left handed shot, but there's nothing odd about the result. It's 29 18. And Georgia Tech now five for five from beyond the arc. They're just lighting it up. And the other thing, Lenny, they are not turning it over. And when this young team does not turn it over, they're pretty good. Oh, they certainly are. And again, it comes down to experience. Hansbro fouled by Jeremy Smith. That's his second. Smith got calls for that one. But again, you look at there's a bang right there. As Anthony Morrow makes sure he gets a piece of Tyler Hansbro on the rebound. That one's going to leave a mark. Yeah, and it takes its toll. I mean, over and over again.
continue to absorb those body blows, and eventually you run out of gas. And again, we saw that at Maryland, where Tyler right. Hansbrough continually got bumped and banged, and eventually didn't have a field goal, I think, in the last four minutes. It's the free throw. The young man has been rookie of the week seven times this year. Only Kenny Anderson, the great Georgia Tech guard, was named more as a rookie. That was 10. And if he doesn't get ACC rookie of the year unanimously, then some voter wasn't watching. Yeah, that ought to be an investigation. The crowd on its feet. Balance shot by Moore. He has 10. You see these guys gaining confidence, don't you? Terry. And that was a quick shot. The time and score situation, you're down 11. You want to make sure that you're going to get a better look than a long three. Georgia Tech commits its fourth turnover. Carl Ravich has the Sports Center 30 and 30 update. Carl? Mike, thank you. A judge in Ohio ruling in favor today of former Ohio State basketball coach Jimmy O'Brien saying O'Brien was improperly fired by the university after it had learned that he had loaned money to a recruit. He may be awarded in damages up to nine and a half million. That will come after another hearing. And Sammy Sosa has declined an offer from the Washington Nationals. His agent Adam Katz telling me moments ago he wouldn't be surprised if it's the last time we've seen Sammy in a uniform. Back to you guys. Thank you, Carl. It's sort of shocking about uh, Sammy Sosa. I mean, wonder how you turned down that much money to extend your career. Let's check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Well, guys, moments ago you were talking about the abuse Tyler Hansbrough takes physically during the course of a game. As a kid, he dished it out. Grew up with two brothers, Greg and Ben. Ben scored on him, had the temerity to score on him in a pickup game. Tyler Hansbrough hit him in the mouth, chipped his tooth, and said, don't ever do that again. He doesn't <laughs> like it. Ah, uh, but he's playing with the big boys now. He's been dishing it out on his own, but today. Hansbrough with a steal. That'll get him up. I was going to say, there's payback there. But today, he's been getting banged around. That's a good way to get revenge. He may be the most complete freshman post player to come in this league in the last 20 years. Well, he knows how to play. has cut the lead back to eight with 9.24 to go first half. Tyler Hansborough showing you he can play some full court defense and run the court as well. Long pass. Harvard barely saves it to Morrow. Two on two and he'll wait for help. Hansborough just playing with more confidence defensively able to go outside on people. Morrow thought he was going to be fouled. Gave up on the shot. Fortunately for him, Jeremy Smith was there to follow. Fraser tries a three. Comes Frederick back the other way for Georgia Tech. Reverse layup, no. Fraser, two on three. Miller. Hansborough, offensive rebound, fouled before the shot. Again, we talked about the confidence Hansborough's demonstrating. This is within the last couple of weeks where he's willing to step out and deny guys at the top. And obviously able to handle the ball. You see Paul Hewlett very deflated by that turnover. That's what's been bothering Georgia Tech, especially during that eight-game losing streak, as you mentioned before, Mike, the inability to take care of the ball. Hansbrough has now hit seven out of eight free throws here in the first half. And that's why when you see Carolina come down and they're at a, a deficit at one time, double-digit deficit, and guys are taking quick shots. He needs to touch the ball. That's going to get you better shots because the defenses have to honor him. 8.50 to go. Hansborough will get a breather. Sanders comes back in. Now here's more full court pressure as Green is in. Danny, a freshman out of North Babylon, New York, for the heels. And the guards from Georgia Tech are going to come back and get the ball. Continue to leave it in the big guy's hands. They're asking for trouble. Paco Dial is on the court. He's number 12 for Georgia Tech. Dial, offensive foul. 
Tonight at 9 Eastern, NBA on ESPN. Gilbert Arenas and the Washington Ball Club takes on Dirk Nowitzki and Dallas. Three former North Carolina players will be on display. Brendan Hayward and Antoine Jamison are in Washington. Jerry Stackhouse, of course, playing for Dallas. And Antoine Jamison having a heck of a year. Obviously, second leading scorer on that team, but also rebounding. Like a tremendous team. leadership. That's right. Solid citizen. Noel is back in after a long time on the bench. And this will be an offensive foul against North Carolina. David Noel with a moving screen. That's two on Noel. And you know, Roy Williams was telling an official, hey, he can see the screen. Bottom line is you need to give the guy change direction. That's really what the call is about. And if he can see the screen and there's enough room to change direction, and that's what Roy's discussing with the official now, it shouldn't be an illegal screen if they make contact. I saw a couple of games over the weekend. I have never seen screeners move that far. Boy, Frederick got away with a push off there against Miller. Morrow. Deep three. Under pressure. 13 points for Anthony Morrow the first half. Well, you talk about being in a zone. Morrow just doesn't feel he can miss. He just needs a sliver of daylight. The sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, is leading Georgia Tech to a big first half lead. Sounds like they're playing football. <laughs> One of the reasons North Carolina is so far down in this game, they have yet to hit a three-point shot. While Georgia Tech is a perfect six for six. Miller trying to change that. Well, Georgia Tech doing a nice job on the glass, and particularly without Tyler Hanbro in the game. Frederick, great pass inside to Amino. And the biggest lead of the game, 38-25. Fraser with the drive. Sanders tips no. Sanders has got to grab that and go back up strong. But again, Georgia Tech commanding the boards and keeping people out of that lane. And Hansbro needs to get back into this ball game to give Carolina a threat inside. At least they're able to go inside out, make the defense change. Quick shot by Dial at the other end. Then Tarver gets a block and then a foul. This will be on Dial. That will be his second. And Roy Williams has four players set to come in the ball game. Not exactly the blue team, but close. Well, actually, they got some experienced guys out there. You know, they've got Noel, they've got Sanders. I think Noel out of the five guys on the floor is going to be the one guy to remain. Is yeah. Green. Fortunate bounce for the freshman who shoots almost 77%. Again, Hansrow's been the only real effective threat for Carolina, and with him out of the game, the last couple of plays for Carolina, the offense really hasn't been focused. Second free throw is good, and that will give them an opportunity to get Rayshon Terry back. Carolina's front court, 25 points. The guards have scored only two. Frederick trying to beat the pressure of Quentin Thomas. Backup point guard is in for the first time. Good catch by Frederick to save the poor pass. Amino tries to go one on one, lost the ball. Yard gets the drive and missed the point blank shot. And one and done for Carolina once again. Georgia Tech certainly not shy about putting it up in a hurry. And Sam Frederick knocks down another three. Eight points for Frederick. They are still perfect from outside. Seven out of seven from three-point range. The lead is now 14 points. Terry switched to the left hand and couldn't hit it. And that shot is blocked. Hansborough tried to get it up, and Tarver had great position on him, blocked it from behind. 
Well, they're playing with tremendous confidence right now. And very active, too. They're not just waiting for things to happen. They're getting to spots. They're sealing off driving lanes, forcing Carolina to adjust. And then when they make the adjustment, Georgia Tech right there. And Roy Williams does not look happy as Bell will go to the free throw line. Well, he's certainly not happy, but that look, that's the pensive look. He's looking for solutions. He's trying to find ways that, you know, he can get his team back on a roll. And, and right now, Georgia Tech is playing with the athleticism. 17 rebounds to Carolina's 10. We talked about how they've been shooting from beyond the arc, 7 of 7. Georgia Tech is a team 38% on the season from three-point range. They're going to raise that tonight. They've hit 7 out of 7. Morrow's going to get a breather. Bell now has five points off the bench. Paul Hewitt going very, very deep and has a lead of 16 points. Gordon Thomas, that's been the bugaboo for that young man since he came to Carolina. Too many turnovers. Well, that time I'm wondering why he went so deep. There was really nothing to start, nothing to do going so deep and allow the double team. Frederick, great job to get open and hits the jumper. And we told you, Zam Frederick, a starter for 20 games. The last two games had to come off the bench. Had career highs of 19 and 22 in those last two games. And he's just playing with a heck of a lot of confidence and with energy. Terry tries to get to the baseline. Ginyard had it knocked away, nearly swiped. Now Ginyard gets penetration. A hands pro missed the jam, but they'll call a foul. His hands bro went down under the bucket. The foul will be on Bell. Let's go to Doris. Mike, after a freshman season that saw Zam Frederick play only six minutes per game, it was not a certainty that he was going to come back to Georgia Tech. Lenny, you referenced earlier his father was a standout player at South Carolina. His father made it very clear he wanted him to go. Georgia Tech over the summer, in fact, granted him a waiver to transfer. Frederick went and visited with South Carolina coach Dave Odom, but the reality was he felt like he and Paul Hewitt were on the same page. He wanted to be at Georgia Tech, and tonight they're glad to have him, guys. <laughs> no question about it. And again, it's a young man that we talked about his high school exploits, knows how to score. And now he's just got to find ways where he's comfortable, and he's really thrived when the ball goes inside and gets kicked back out as he steps up behind the arc. Bell was open, passed on the shot. Oh, Morrow, Weaver pass. Morrow buries one. He has 16 points. Eight out of eight. Eight out of eight. From beyond the arc. And the lead is 48 to 29. Georgia Tech on fire and burying North Carolina. Terry lost the ball. Bell brings it down. And Terry knocks it out of bounds, but they'll say last touch by Georgia Tech. What a run by the Yellow Jackets. They're now up by 19, their biggest lead of the ball game, and that'll get Danny Green back in. Frederick will get a breather. It's amazing. Lenny, sometimes kids are just more comfortable for whatever reason coming off the bench than they are starters. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is a different type of mental preparation. You know, you, when you come off the bench, you've got to have impact right away because if you don't, you're going to go back and sit down. And so you've got to really get amped up even more so. You don't have the luxury of trying to play your way into the game as some of the starters do. But also, you know, Zam Frederick may be carrying about 10 pounds more than he needs to. He was running out of energy in games and really wasn't effective. Fast break, hands for a mug by DL. That'll be three quickly on DL. Well, Tyler Hansborough, really the only bright spot for Carolina, but he's taken a lick, and yet, you know, he keeps on ticking. He's coming back, trying to take the ball to the basket, gets to the free throw line, but those bangs and those bumps will take their toll. No question about it. I don't care how. Uh, how well conditioned you are. You're going to feel it towards the end. 10 out of 12 free throws for Hansborough, Lenny, here in the first half, and 16 big points. And they needed every single one of those points just to, if you call this, within shooting range, shooting distance. Plus, he hasn't touched the ball that much, really. 
I, you know, you blame his teammates to a certain extent because in their zest to push the ball up the floor, they're taking some long shots, some ill advised shots. Frederick trapped in the corner and calls timeout. Last night at Cameron Indoor Stadium, shoot. Although you get the feeling that JJ, with all the practice he had as a kid, was pretty much a self made killer. Well, I mean, great players are, despite what everybody thinks, great players are self made. It's all about the time you put in the gym. Certainly, you got to be blessed with some natural skill, and Reddick certainly is blessed with a natural skill. But in the end, it's the hard work that's got him where he is. He hit one over the weekend that was just ridiculous. About 32 feet in rhythm, on target, nothing but net. And that doesn't come just by happenstance. You no, know no. he practices that. You know, Lenny, for anyone else, anybody else, it would look like a desperation shot. For him, it looked like a layup. Hansborough gets the foul. That's the first one on Tyler. Carolina still has committed only six team fouls in this half. Oh, I mean, they haven't had a chance to foul anybody <laughs> with the Georgia Tech lighting it up from beyond the arc. But they keep attacking. They keep looking to go inside, and when they're sealed off inside, they kick it back outside. And I think there's a newfound emphasis by these Yellow Jackets to work inside out when they're shooting the three. It's, it's, it's a much better rhythm that you get because all your momentum when you're catching a ball from a pass inside, all your momentum flows towards the basket as opposed to the lateral pass where you've got to catch, turn, square up, and shoot the ball. And the numbers bear that out. Well, the freshman from L.A. now has seven points. It's 50 to 30. And certainly the Carolina coaching staff is going to be very unhappy about giving up 50 points or more in the first half. Danny Green rolls in with the left hand. He has four. And Danny Green's one of those guys that comes off the bench with a lot of energy, gives you some instant offense, and I mean, he can get it going. The Carolina faithful hope it's contagious. D.L. travels. That's the eighth turnover against Georgia Tech. It's 50-32 Jackets. The gambling ring investigation. Back to you guys, Mike. Carl, Jay, thank you very much. It is 50 to 32 here. North Carolina really needs a run. Danny Green hits one with 320 to go in the half to cut it to 16. The two and and they throw it away. Aminu wasn't looking. And Frederick threw the cross court pass. Well, two consecutive baskets by Danny Green. Obviously, Georgia Tech's mistake. And the one thing lurking for Georgia Tech is the fact that they've got 15 personal fouls, two on every one of their key guys, including Dickey, Morrow, Frederick, and Hansborough scoring over Tarver. Hansborough with 19 points in the first half. Frederick guarded by Fraser. And an offensive foul called on Georgia Tech. Aminu gets his second. And that's what Carolina should be doing. At least give him a look every time down, force Georgia Tech to adjust their defense, and then the Carolina in turn adjusts and find some guys on the perimeter, find other guys on the weak side. Paul Hewitt showing his displeasure on that latest call. And again, we talked about the foul situation. And key guys with two, and now with three. Green. And that'll be out of bounds to Georgia Tech with 2.40 to go. And Green may have shaken himself up a little bit, hustling for the loose ball. You look at both teams, and we, we always talk about Carolina's youth, and, and rightly so, and how they've been able to adjust and thrive, you know, by comparison. And Georgia Tech, obviously, another young team, only one senior and one junior. They play primarily sophomores and some freshmen. 
Frederick got out of trouble, gets the ball back, wide open three. <laughs> and if you're going to be perfect on a night shooting three-point shot, you might as well get the bounce on one. And no way that three-point shot's going to go in when it hits off the back of the rim. Again, inside out. And look at Frederick. All of that momentum going to the basket. Oh, it's a shooter's roll. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. Nine for nine from three-point range. The heels are 0 for seven. And, you know, Carolina has the same opportunity going into hands row. If Georgia Tech wants to peel back and help out, you spot up. Knocked away, nearly stolen. Brown wanted a foul call on the contact. Fraser out of the corner, wide open three, can't hit it. You go 80 feet to get the offensive rebound. Fraser back the other way. And look at the quickness and the athleticism of Georgia Tech. Newfound zeal to play defense. Hansborough had it blocked on the way up. Got control back and put it in. 53-38. And Hansborough, brilliant with 21 points in the half. This kid is something special. And I'll tell you what, Georgia Tech has made up their minds. They're going to play Hansborough man up, and they're going to shut everybody else down. Ball with a miss. Noel with a rebound. Hansborough may get 60. That's 23. But well, if they're going to play that one-on-one, -on -one, you need to do it a little better. Well, with this lead, they don't want to get guys in foul trouble, but you're right. If you make up your mind in doing that, you got to pressure everyone else as well so they don't have those straight hooks into the post. Bell goes inside, double-teamed and fouled. Right here. Hold it right there. Now look, everybody's staying on their men. And Hansbro just has a one-on-one -on -one type of situation for him. And Georgia Tech has made up their mind. Hansbro might score 40 tonight, but if they shut everybody else down, they have a chance. And you know, so far they've been pretty disciplined, Georgia Tech has in playing that defense. But there's a time and point where a guy starts burning you so much. Even though you have a lead that you're tempted to come out of it and start yeah. helping on them, and that's when it all falls apart. Well, there's two philosophies. You're playing man-to-man -man and say one guy is not going to beat you, or you take away the best thing that they have, and we've seen that theory work this year against Hansborough. But the bottom line is Georgia Tech still leads by 13 points. Right. So they're doing something right. You kind of couldn't tell by this crowd. No. And Hansborough has 23 of the Carolina 40 points. Now under a minute to go. Green for three. That would have been big. Mario West knocked it out of bounds. And Paul Hewitt expressing disbelief in that call. Well, no coach likes what they consider controversial calls to happen right in front of them. They feel like it's a disrespect. Yeah. And, you know, Paul motioned to the official that his guy got slapped and grabbed, and, and he's talking to the other official as well, really trying to lobby his case. Give him some respect. Is the one to Terry, or is the reach-around foul? And that's going to be close. Is that Frederick? Mario West. That's Mario West. Wow. That's three on Mario West, who's been starting at the point. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. We'll start with women's college basketball. Number five, Tennessee, against number 13, Georgia. At 9 Eastern, the men come on ESPN. Number 17, Georgetown. That will be against Marquette. Terry hits the free throw. The junior from Winston-Salem has nine points. And now virtually anybody that Paul Hewitt puts on the court uh, will be trying to avoid their third foul here in the first half. As I mentioned, that's what has been lurking throughout all the success they've had today. Got to let it go. 12-3 run for the Heels. Morrow out of the corner. Finally missed the three. Only went 19 and a half minutes without missing one. 
And that would have been a dart right in the chest. As it is, the lead is 11, and the heels are going to have a, a chance to cut it to single digits. But with about a 1.2 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, Carolina is best served by holding on to this and making this their last possession. One of the things that's very difficult for both of these teams with the young point guards they have, there's so much youth at every other position. It's not like you're surrounded by all Americans. You're surrounded by kids who may be just as unsure of the offense as you are. Well, that happens, and what you need is someone who is extraordinarily confident and kind of instills that confidence in the guys that, that are playing around them. And then you kind of overcome that skittishness. But, you know, these guys have been playing long enough. I mean, 22 games for Georgia Tech, 21 games for Carolina. You know, young people for both of these teams have logged enough minutes that they should be able to execute. Poor pass by Noel, picked off, knocked out of bounds. And it's out to Georgia Tech. So the shot clock goes off. Contact on that one too. Yeah, I was gonna say Carolina fortunate that the defender after the ball was loose, not the defender, but the guy going after the ball he wasn't called for a foul. It looked like it was Russ Miller. And there you there you talk about execution, missed opportunity to get the last shot and go in with a great deal of momentum. Georgia Tech can stem a lot of this momentum by using up this clock and scoring. The only other time Georgia Tech has scored 53 points in the first half this year was against Elon. This is not Elon. Moore. Got it. Huge, huge lift for Georgia Tech. Just when it seemed like Carolina was breathing down its neck, it creates some separation with that play. 18 points for Anthony Morrow to increase the lead to 13 at the half, 55 to 42. Let's go to Doris. Paul, you guys shot a great percentage. That usually is a function of good shots. What did you do well offensively? Well, we moved the ball, but for us to win this game, we've got to keep them off the foul line. We're obviously fouling entirely too much. With Hansbro, you decided to check them one-on-one. -on -one. Will there be any strategy changes? And if so, what would they be in the second half? Well, I think what we've done is work pretty well. Like I said, we've got to continue moving the ball. If we can not foul as much, I think we're going to have a pretty good chance in this game. Good luck in the second half, Paul. Thanks. Doris, thank you very much. Georgia Tech 10 and 5 when they lead at the half. They lead by 13 at Carolina. Let's join Carl Ravitch and Jay Billis for the UPS Halftime Report. Hi, Mike Lund. Thank you very much. Tyler Hansborough is a one-man wrecking crew. The problem was the rest of his team got wrecked, thanks in large part to Anthony Morrow's 18. Is it as simple as keeping these guys off the free throw line? Well, that's a big part of it. You don't want to give the home team free throw opportunities. But what it really shows you, at least in my judgment, at the end of the first half, how important end of half situations are in the start of the second half. North Carolina worked their way back into it with a chance to cut it under 10 with the way they played, especially on the defensive end, after that four-minute timeout. But they didn't handle the last couple of possessions well. And instead of cutting it down even further, right. they go into halftime down 13. Now, they've got to start out strong the first five minutes of the second half. That's going to be the ball game right there. Get some offense from Noel and others. Meantime, more on bubble teams coming up a little bit later on in this half. News, though. Tech with a halftime lead at North Carolina, 55 to 42. The 55 points, a season high for a half for Georgia Tech. You wouldn't really expect it to come here at North Carolina. They had scored 53 against Elon, but they're playing very, very well tonight, Lenny. Well, Georgia Tech certainly is, and the message that they're sending is that they're going to play Tyler Hansbrough straight up, and they're going to force everybody else to hurt them. But on the offensive end, you know, this is a team that only shoots 38% from beyond the arc, and they average about five makes per game. They're shooting 90% today, 9 of 10. And it's been amazing inside out. They've been able to spot up and get some shots. Carolina's going to have to cover the shooters. 
Here's our UBS first half stats. Georgia Tech shooting 61%. The big disparity owned by North Carolina comes from the free throw line. They've hit 16 out of 21. Let's check in with Doris. Well, Lenny, in regards to all those shooters from Georgia Tech, the focus for Carolina was defense. Specifically, they felt like when Georgia Tech went off the bounce, they did a poor job recovering out to shooters. They want to make sure that they are there a little bit faster this time in the second half, guys. Doris, thank you. The leading scorer is Morrow with 18, Frederick with 13. Hansborough has 23 for North Carolina. His career high is 26. That's our whole game, not a half. You wonder if that missed three is an omen for both teams. You know, Georgia Tech, six of their 12 losses, they led or were tied at the half. So this is a question of whether this young Georgia Tech team knows how to finish. Noel gets the tip follow for the bucket after Hainsborough missed. Clinch, who started the ball game and hit a couple of outside shots. This is Morrow. Carolina trying to play defense real tough in the opening sequence here in the second half. Dickey hits the bucket. He has seven. You talk about clamping down on Tyler Hansbrough and making the other guys beat you. Wes Miller and Bobby Fraser 0 for 7 combined. You had Ginyard and David Noel, and together they're 1 of 12. Miller, that's his favorite spot to shoot the three. He was open and finally knocked it down. Their first three of the night. And really, all things being equal, that's all it has to turn around to swing a ball game. George Tech gets cold from the outside. Carolina gets hot. you got a much different result. Georgia Tech with a 10-point lead over Carolina early second half, Len. Well, Wes Miller with his first field goal of the day, and it comes down to Georgia Tech not really following this strategy. Look at Morrow. Now watch him. Goes inside. He turns his head. He can't find Miller. Georgia Tech in the first half, much more successful in playing the guys on the perimeter, not worrying about the ball going inside, and that way they never lost anyone. As soon as you lose Miller, he'll come back and hurt you. Well, especially with him, if you give him some defensive attention, he's not even going to take the shot. Morrow the other way, in and out on the three. Clinch with an offensive rebound. Does a good job of covering the weak side glass, just in case. The intensity level in North Carolina's defense has really increased. Tarver walks. And defense paying off already. That's the 11th turnover committed by Georgia Tech. Here's the story of the three-point shooting. And Georgia Tech starts the second half 0 for 2. So they have missed their last three after starting 9 for 9. A nice move to get some penetration. Miller out of the corner. No. Knocked out by Noel. That time Miller had a hand in his face. You know, no one paid attention to the ball handler. The guys off the ball playing their men. Inbound to Tarver and back to Morrow. The sophomore will bring it up. Lead is 10 at one point. George Tech in the first half led by 20 again out of the corner. And Tarver commits the offensive foul. Going for the rebound. So that's one on Tarver. And Morrow's had a couple of wide open looks out of the corner. But he buried in the first half. He's missed him here. You can go 0 for 9 a lot easier than you can go 9 for 9. Noel! The Tomahawk cuts it to 8. And that's what you call running with a purpose. You know, on the inbounds, Carolina just pushed it up the floor, saw they had an advantage. And Georgia Tech cannot afford to loaf back defensively. Noel really put the hammer down. They try to save it for Carver, but here's another steal. Georgia Tech taking a chance on coming apart. And West commits the hard foul on Hansborough. That was a wasted effort because Hansborough was going to make that one anyway. And that's four on Mario West. 
That's just inexperience and making a mistake. Well, it all began with the turnover. And again, look at Carolina flying down. Mario West, as you mentioned, should have had more discretion and not waste that foul. But it goes back to the inexperience of learning how to win. Tyler Hansborough with 17.26 to go in this game can tie his career high of 26 points. The freshman record for North Carolina is 31. It's been done five times. You get the feeling that 31's gone already. Well, again, when pressured and when pressed, this is where you test the medal of Georgia Tech. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's easy to play when you're 18 up, 20 up, the shots flow and everything. Knocked away and stolen by Miller, then he throws it in the backcourt, and Clinch will come up with it. And, yet, and the I'll, shot clock does I was going to say, because a minute ago, they didn't reset it. Right. A second ago, they didn't reset it, Miller had possession. Yeah, we were both looking up at the same thing instantly to see if they would do that. Almost another steal, and Georgia Tech really shaky right now. Well, they're starting to fall in love with the three. Fred instead of moving the ball. ball. What, if you're Paul Hewitt, there's not a whole lot you can do. 13 turnovers. Yeah. What happens to young teams on the road, Danny? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you have prosperity, but when things start to fall apart a little bit, you got to have somebody who's going to help you bring it back together. You know, Georgia Tech needs a leader out there at this point in time. Three turnovers early in the second half. North Carolina has committed none. Hands for all again, and a reach-in foul. If that's Morrow, it is. That's his third. Foul problems. We played Georgia Tech in the first half. Nearly everybody had two. Non-shooting foul inbound to Noel. Green. Nice spin. Got to the baseline. A little too nice. He traveled. <laughs> turnover in the second half against the Heels. 16-19 to go in the ballgame, so they have turned the lead to five on a 10-2 second half scoring spurt. We got a hand it to Carolina. I thought after turning it over in the potential last possession of the first half and then having Georgia Tech score, the Georgia Tech would come out with a lot more confidence and Carolina would be a bit deflated, but it's been just the opposite. I think they got inflated in the locker room. Can you imagine that speech? A nice move inside of the bucket to Jeremy Smith playing with that bad back. He only has four points in this game. That was a big bucket there. Hansborough wheels to the baseline. Got the roll. 28 points, a career high for Tyler Hansborough. In a one-man offensive game. Leads back to five. Smith got inside. The crowd wanted a walk. But the sophomore out of Fort Worth kept that pivot foot still. He certainly did and used his body very well. Got head and shoulders past David Noel. And once you do that on a defender, there's nothing much the defender can do but foul. In yard. Got back off Hansborough right there. Not allow him to put it on the floor and try to get me in some trouble. Green clanks one off the side of the back support. Now Hansborough trying to drive. Got the basket and the foul. I guess they didn't listen, huh? No, they didn't. 30 for Hansborough. The foul on Rayshon Dickey. His third. Hansborough will have a chance to tie the freshman record when we come back. Wednesday brought to you by Staples. This one ignited the crowd earlier. David Noel with a smash. Paul Hewitt and Roy Williams both trying to fire up their ball clubs. 
And Tyler Hansborough, who already has 30 points in this game with 14.42 left. If you subscribe to the theory that one man can't beat you, it's working so far. Georgia Tech still up by five. But North Carolina has crept back in this ballgame. Well, it's obviously a high-risk strategy because you get Hansborough going. And you have to worry about shutting down everybody else. Rayshon Terry in the first half had double figures. But no one else really chipped in. And that one's out to North Carolina. A rare miss at the line by Hansbro. Well, you figure if nothing else, his right arm might get tired. <laughs> but, you know, Carolina just needs another reliable third score. Keep Terry going. And David Noel starting to get going. Reach in foul on Sam Frederick. And Carl Ravitch has a Sports Center 30 at 30. Carl. All right, Mike, news surrounding that gambling ring allegedly financed by code is assistant Rick Tockett. An official with the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice today told ESPN.com's Mike Fish it appears unlikely that Janet Jones Gretzky will be charged with anything. She may be called as a witness, but John Haggerty says she did not do anything illegal. Sammy Sosa's days in a major league uniform, according to his agent, are over. Sosa turning down the Washington Nationals offer saying last year was so distressing he doesn't want to go through that again. Michael. All right, thanks, Carl. Quite a comeback here by North Carolina. They're within five. They have the ball. Make it a three-point lead. Quentin Thomas who only averages two points a game. Hit that big bucket. Yeah, he's the unlikeliest source of points. But when you're open, you gotta shoot it. You gotta yeah. make them honor you. Five seconds, Carl. Very close. And Paul Hewitt has to take a timeout because Clinch had picked up his dribble and he was in trouble. Let's go to Doris. Well, guys, you're just talking about Quentin Thomas and the fact that he's got to take open shots. It has been a struggle, admittedly so. Roy Williams said it has been hard on this young man, but over the last two games, he's played 22 minutes without a turnover. Now, he did have one earlier in the game, but Roy Williams said, listen, this is a kid who has not hung his head. He has not pouted. He's coming to practice with a mindset to get better, and he has done that. Lenny, you've got to be patient as a young player and listen to your coaches. He has done that. Absolutely. I mean, this is a process, and a development process, and Quentin Thomas just a sophomore. You know, he's not getting enough minutes, 11 and a half minutes per game, obviously because of the terrific play of Bobby Fraser. In the end, he's just going to have to buy his time, continue to develop in the minutes that he's getting. You know, he's a good player. He would have never been recruited to this school if he didn't have skills. And certainly he has played better than he did a season ago when he was only had one more assist than he did a tournament. Morrow has been cold in the second half. They need his shooting skills. Noel with a reach in and the steal, but taken right back by Georgia Tech. And then stepping on the end line, the ball goes to Carolina. And again, Paul Hewitt knows that play was right in front of him. And he's letting the officials know that they may have missed that one as well. And it gets frustrating when you see a lead like this evaporate. Your opponent getting terrific momentum, and there's nothing you can do there on the sideline. Noel kicks it out to Thomas Miller, wide open to tie. And shoots an air ball. Hansbrough gets the rebound, and there's a foul underneath. It's on Tarver, number two on him. Hansborough will go back to the line, and the disparity in team fouls is overwhelming. 24 to 7 and that's in this ballgame. And, and Mike, that's something obviously that Paul Hewitt has a case about. This has been a very physical game on both ends. Hansborough did not get the roll. He's 12 out of 16. And then in frustration, he comes in and commits a personal foul. It's only a second, and I think the angst of missing a free throw has yeah. kind of really affected him. That's why he's sitting down and get a little perspective. And this is an opportunity now for Georgia Tech to take advantage of Hansborough's absence. That would have tied the North Carolina freshman record to 31 points. He has 30. Georgia Tech can't buy one right here. Well, again, uh, the more animated, the more active Carolina defense swarming whenever a guy picks up his dribble. Out of 
the corner, in and out again for Morrow. It's he likes that left corner, but he can't hit one at all now. It's in his mind now after yeah. having that first pair out. They were once down by 20, 50 to 30. Now they've tied it at 61. Old Mo has certainly swung toward the heels. Bell wide open. It's getting a little tight, isn't it? Ball is out of bounds to North Carolina. Again, just a little bit of penetration by Thomas. Hits the trailer. Terry, and Terry was the only complimentary scorer in the first half of Carolina, and he's starting to heat up. And that's what I mentioned. They just need the third guy to be able to deliver some points, keep the defenses on it. This place will really go crazy if they can get a bucket here to take the lead. Last time the Heels had the lead, it was 16-15. Great block and a timeout call to Jeremy Smith. What a pretty play. And normally, I would say, because of the time, 12.22 left, that might not be such a great call, but this is such a critical possession for Georgia Tech to keep that lead. I agree. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2, a big women's game for you. Number 5, Tennessee, against number 13, Georgia. Then at 9 o'clock, we go on the men's side on ESPN, where number 17, Georgetown, will take on Marquette. Both games available on ESPN2 HD and ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or your satellite provider. You know, the two teams that really have acquitted themselves well in the strongest conference in the nation, the Big East. And boy, isn't the Big East loaded. That's going to be a fascinating tournament. So will the ACC because there are going to be so many teams fighting for so few spots. It's going to mean an awful lot this year. Oh, it certainly will. And again, the intensity of all of the tournaments of the major conferences that are going to be really decide who goes to the NCAA tournament or not. And I really think early on it's going to have impact. I look at the Big East, the quarterfinal, same thing with the ACC. Right. Here are the standings and the top four teams, you remember, will get a bye in the first round of the tournament. Miami, Virginia, and Florida State all with five, so North Carolina would fall into a virtual tie and out of fourth place if they do not win this game tonight, but they have already done the majority of the work coming from down 20 to tie. And to go back to the conference tournament, a lot of bubble teams right there yes, in the sir. middle. A lot of teams who's aspirations of going will be dashed if they're not successful in the ACC tournament. It could be six teams fighting for four spots. That's right. That last timeout was Georgia Tech's last timeout other than a media timeout. So, as I said, normally I wouldn't say that was a good play, but tie score right here, that possession is huge because if Carolina took the lead, this place would explode, as you mentioned. Yeah, the air would have been completely out of the bubble. Going to be foul Sanders who is in there working against Dickey. That's number one on Byron Sanders. 11.59 to go in the ball game. We're tied at 61. Carolina, we are tied at 61. Georgia Tech and the Heels. Take a look at the careerbuilder.com resume, and it's North Carolina's tournament resume. The Heels have a good RPI. They have played a tough schedule. The teams they have beaten, Kentucky, NC State, Arizona, and Maryland. The key losses, including Duke, which is only four points to the Blue Devils. Well, they may be key losses, but the only one that's a bad loss, you might consider that, is Southern Cal. And that was on the road early in the season. Dickey with a lean-in bucket and draws the foul as well. And that shows you how important that timeout was. At least it's kind of stalled Carolina's push for the lead. Gave Paul Hewitt a chance to design a play that's going to get him a bucket and some breathing room. Anthony Morrow and Sam Frederick combined for 31 points in the first half. They have not scored in the second half. Dickey with a three-point play. He has 10 and a big possession there for Georgia Tech. is back in with his 30 points. Ginyard working outside. Here's Hansborough, and they'll back off of him from 22 feet. Baseline against Tarver, got the reverse. 
Well, the problem, obviously, for Carver is if you're going to play a guy that far away, you've got to get your body down, get your center of gravity down so you can move with him. He's standing upright, and Hansbrough is just able to blow right by him off the bounce. No freshman has ever scored more points for North Carolina than Tyler Hansbrough. That one's kicked out of bounds and out to North Carolina. He has 32 points. Five guys that scored 31 as freshmen. This breaks the record. And again, you can see Tarver just standing straight up. Hansbrough gets low, gets head and shoulders past him. And just like in football, when you're handling the ball and you're guarding the ball handle, low man wins. 15 turnovers against Georgia Tech. And the heels with another chance to take the lead. Thomas is the point guard right now. Terry missed the jam. Hansborough partially blocked on the way up. And Terry commits the foul going after the rebound. Wow. I don't know how he missed that one. Well, an unfortunate series of occurrences in that one play for Carolina. Missed an opportunity to take the lead. Georgia Tech battles to get possession. And once again, Georgia Tech battling the emotional swing that will occur as Carolina ultimately takes the lead. I think they know it, and they're doing their best to keep from getting there. Having never been above the rim except on a ladder, <laughs> uh, isn't that embarrassing? Oh, especially when there's no one in front of you. Now, I subscribe fully in that kind of play that you got to dunk it. But you got to make sure it goes down. Frederick being guarded well by Thomas. Can't penetrate. Now picks up his dribble. And that's what you don't want in the point guard when they do that. Smith left alone. Doesn't want the shot. Now Morrow. The shot clock is at seven. Remember, Georgia Tech has no timeouts to call. Smith back again. And lost track of the shot clock and they turn it over somebody has to get the ball inside 10 seconds who can do it on his own and is willing to do it on his own no time to pass it to somebody else when it's under 10 seconds well particularly if you're a point guard and as Zan Frederick has to break the defense down. That's what I talked about. You push it, you don't have numbers, you distribute it, and the shot clock is running down, and you've got to create. Miller for three. Hansborough, foul. North Carolina, which did a poor job in the first half, especially on the offensive glass, now starting to take over in the second half. Let's check in with Doris. Well, guys, Tyler Hansborough, in an attempt to be physically prepared to play Division I basketball, after his sophomore year in high school, consulted a nutritionist, wanted to take his body and his diet to a whole new level, actually woke up from that point forward at 4.30 a.m. every day. He wanted to ensure he got six to seven meals. That first breakfast at 4.30, six eggs, four pieces of toast with peanut butter, oatmeal, protein shake, and an orange. That is something I could envy, fellas. Jeez. I think I get worn out eating six meals a day. He has 34, and North Carolina has the lead for the first time since the 14-14 mark of the first half. They have wiped out the lead of 20 points. Now this is a big possession to see how Georgia Tech responds to them having the lead. Wide open, Dickey way off on the jumper. Hansborough. Got it. Tyler Hansborough has 36, and the lead is three. And Georgia Tech just imploding right now. Shot got the roll. And boy, did they need that for Morrow. He has 20. But he had 18 in the first half. Well, if there was ever a time that the one-on-one -on -one skills and athleticism by Georgia Tech should come to the fore, it's now. Carolina really pressuring. You get an opportunity to spread the floor. A lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And that's where Georgia Tech can excel. Morrow into the lane, had it partially.
partially blocked. Dickey with the offensive rebound into Hansborough. Offensive foul on Dickey. That will be four on Rashawn Dickey. Well, the accusation is throwing the elbow. We see right here what he does with the ball. You know, I, I guess because of the ultimate result where Hansborough hits the deck, but if you watch a lot of guys who hold the ball up there, and Hansborough himself does the same thing. It's just a question of where the defender is and what the ultimate result is. Hansborough did a nice job of selling it. You can't lead with your elbows and shoulders, but if you watch post play when guys are trying to get free, everybody does it. Four on Dickey. This is Noel. Frazier back in at the point. A lot of time to go in what is now a very close ball game. But the momentum is all with North Carolina. Shot clock down to three. Miller leans in with the left hand. Not his shot. But it's only the seventh non-three-point shot he's taken all year. Not really too many guys out there who can create their own. Rayshon Terry might have been the guy to have his hands on the ball as it ran down. It's also the problem for Georgia Tech. They don't have guys very often that penetrate. Nice spin and the foul. Well, we told you Jeremy Smith is a warrior. And despite those back spasms, I don't think anything's getting him out of this game. He has eight points. And just drew another foul on Sanders. Thank you very much, Carl Antoine Jamison. Very classy young man. Always has been. Speaking of classy, how did Georgia Tech come back and take the lead after blowing a 20-point advantage here? Well, it's, it was gut check time. I mean, there's no question about it. You and I both mused about once Carolina got the lead, it might be the end for Georgia Tech. But, you know, they're bouncing back, and it's all about growth and development, learning how to win and learning how to deal with adversity. Smith missed the free throw, so the lead is one. You know, Carolina, with their youth, they've gotten over it, and they understand yeah. it. And, you know, Tech, with 10 and 12 record, you know, they're still in that process of learning how to come back from the person. And Georgia Tech cranking up the defensive intensity. Fraser drives and then throws it away right to Mario West. Two on one. West will take it in late. Oh, hustle, and Fraser. Fraser got back and made the pick. Great hustle. Never gave up on the ball. Terry the other way, and he throws it away. And Roy Williams can only do that. Grab the back of his head and walk up and down. The greatest motivator is making a mistake. Yeah, should be. <laughs> and Fraser obviously makes a mistake on the offensive end with the Aaron pass. But he does a great job of getting back and erasing that mistake and getting possession again, only to have Rayshon Terry turn it over. He'll come out, and Quentin Thomas comes in with 6.50 and counting in the ballgame. Georgia Tech by one over Carolina. Georgia Tech had broken an eight-game losing streak. They won the last time out. This would be a big lift for them if somehow they can win here in Chapel Hill. And too many guys running away from the ball when the guy gets trapped and lost dribble. And Georgia Tech's got to find a way to free some people to come from the weak side. Morrow has to force the shot. That really looked ugly and missed. Well, Carolina's defense is forcing Georgia Tech to pick up their dribble yeah. and then denying everybody else or no one else is coming back. Oh. Ginyard to Hansborough. Basket and the foul. He never gave up. He knew he was fouled and just continued to push it up and got it in. Another night at the office for Hansborough. He has 38. And that's what six meals will do for you. <laughs> Give you the strength. To be able to get that ball up, even though you grab. I mean, he took that up from his waist and still horsed it back in.
Dickey will come back in. Theotis Tarver will sit down. The last foul was on Jeremy Smith, his fourth. Hansborough with 38 points, missed another free throw. The lead is one. against Miller who could be their best on the ball defender. You just can't pick up your dribble the way they have been running. Oh, if you do, you got to free guys up to come to the ball. And once Morrow picked up his dribble, you see Hansbro jump in front of Dickey. You see the denial outside on the perimeter and it makes it hard. Hey, hey. 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 on Danny Green. Back in Smith will come out a non shooting foul. Only the sixth team foul against the heels. The next one will put them in the bonus. Morrow to the baseline. He's been stone cold in the second half. As hot as he was the first half, you're right. That's as cold as he is now. Noel with a runner. The lead is three for the heels. Noel has eight. Another gut check time for Georgia Tech. Fans on their feet streaming. Carolina apparently with some momentum. Frederick way out with a miss. Here comes Noel on the run again. Three on one. Noel got the ball right back from Thomas, and the Heels have their biggest lead. And you can tell the nerves are jangling for Georgia Tech. Carver trying to drive foul by Hansbro. That's three on the freshman. Well, again, it's all started with the defense. And Carolina has been running all day. There are more opportunities in the second half, obviously. But in transition, they're getting guys out and they're flying to the basket, beating Georgia Tech down the floor. When you look at the transition points, this has happened throughout the evening. But mostly here in the second half, where Carolina's really clamped down defensively and shaking the ball loose from Georgia Tech. Dickey, a good free throw shooter, who's been their leading scorer in the last five ball games, 17 points, only has 10 tonight, and is two out of three from the free throw line. Now a lot of people are booing because the same play when Hansbro got hit in that face with an elbow almost occurred then. And the official called the block, but if you look at it, Hansborough's starting to stick his head in there. And so when the offensive player turns, he's got no choice but to hit him because mm -hmm. his head is already in there. And, you know, there is the principle of verticality as well. If you're breaking that plane with your head and the offensive player turns, that's the offensive player's space. Dickey hits them both to lead back to three. Thomas with that great speed trying to penetrate. Gets a foul on Zam Frederick. If Thomas learns how to model up that speed and not go at a breakneck pace all the time, he could really become a factor. That's a great point. I think there are times when Thomas over-penetrates and gets himself in trouble. You get beyond a certain point and you allow the other team to double you. You're trying to throw the ball back outside and everybody's denying and that's where he gets in trouble. He's only had 14 free throw attempts all year long. That was the 15th. He had made half of them coming into this game. That's three points for Quentin Thomas, the sophomore from Oakland, California. When I talk about over-penetrate again, if he's going to get in that far, you might as well have the skills or develop the skills to take it all away, draw some fouls, get the ball up on the glass. 74-70, under five minutes to go. A critical game for the Heels. You can't afford to lose at home in the late stages of the season. And they can't afford to lose at all hanging on to fourth place by their fingernails in the ACC. And take a look at the denial. As soon as the dribble is picked up, you watch Carolina go on the denial, fronting the post and overplaying. Look at it right there. Mora, he travel. Georgia Tech just having a tough time getting off a shot, and they continue to make the same mistakes. They come down. One-on-one -on -one dribbling, and then they pick it up. And
and there's nobody to throw it to. And here are the standings, six and four, half game behind Boston College's North Carolina. And remember, the top four teams get that first round by now in the expanded ACC tournament play. And the lead's up to six. Dickey. And that foul will be on Hansbrook. Well, again, about four minutes left. And all the foul trouble. Rayshon Dickey's just resigned to allow Hansbrook. If he gets it inside, allows him to score. Now you see the Smith Center record. He may uh, he may own an awful lot of them before he checks out of here. Depends on how long he stays. Yes, sir. <laughs> now you got to go a long way at this school to get one of those. Well, but put up in a raft. But I would say this: every one of those guys up there are probably capable of doing this one night. That's right. There was a question of the system and the need. Exactly. You know, you know the old joke about the only guy that could hold Michael Jordan under, you know, 30 points. Dean Coach Smith. Smith. And right. that was all system play. Here, though, you're playing to need, and they've needed every bit Carolina has, every bit of those 40 points. And bro. believe that Dickey is not getting down lower when Hansbro is four or five feet off the lane because he knows he's going to put it on the floor and go to the basket. You can't let him get into the paint. He's beating him consistently tonight. Hansbro with a career night. 40 points and he's not done yet. Thanks, Carl. Wizards and Mavericks will have uh, three games from North, or three players from North Carolina, all who have their rafters decorated with their jerseys here at North Carolina. The lead is five. Every possession becomes really important to Georgia Tech right now. Yeah, but they got to play it one possession at a time. It's all about execution. And getting the good looks. Right now, they're not going inside out as much as they did, although they're. Ooh. Smith fouled by Noel, and Noel thought he had a clean block, and Smith went down hard. And you know, again, he suffered from back spasms earlier today and was questionable. That was definitely a foul. Got him on the elbow, and that's what prevented Smith from getting the ball. Well, if that doesn't bring back the back spasms, nothing will. Well, it's got to be mind over matter. That's what Ray Lewis always says, if I don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Smith at the line. He's been held to eight points tonight. He averages 12 and averages almost nine rebounds a game. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that on a free throw. Yeah, no, you could uh, you could do that a lot of stand time. there the rest of your life and not do it. <laughs> Told you he couldn't do it twice in a row, but he missed them both, and the lead is five. Those were huge free throws. Fraser at crunch time back in to run the club. And you can expect them to take every bit of time off of the 35 second clock. Terry. Started by Morrow. Shot clock at seven. Miller found himself open and buried the three. Nice pass by Fraser. And how do you leave Miller open? Well, that's only a second field goal in nine tries, but it was a huge one. That might be the nail right there. Frederick penetrates a rare move by Georgia Tech to get someone inside, and it's 79-73. Still a two-possession ball game. Well, that's what Carolina's done. They've taken away from Georgia Tech the inside out. 
last play that was so effective in the first half. Good defense that time. The pass was poor and picked off. Smith well out of his range. And Morrow has just been shut down in the second half. Good defense and poor shooting when he's had a chance. And Morrow's got to really step up now. He's not really he's working hard enough to get the ball. It's almost as though he doesn't want it. Frederick short on the jumper. And right now, he seems to be the only one who's willing to take that shot. And that was a fadeaway. It looks as though his legs are starting to go on him. 90 seconds to go. Shot clock at 15 for Fraser. He's guarded by Frederick. Noel didn't want the shot. Six on the shot clock. He's going to have to take it now. Noel trying to penetrate. Couldn't get it inside the hand. Throw. Not a good play by the veteran. Morrow out of the corner. He's had several standstill jumpers and been unable to hit anything. One out of eight in the second half after 18 points in the first half of the ball's knocked out of bounds to the Eels. When you're right about Morrow, he has been basically standing in that corner. If they don't get him the ball with the opportunity to shoot, he hasn't created anything. Right now, Paul Hewitt going offensive defense, getting his better defenders. The tail of two halves from 9 out of 10 to 0 for 5, and the heels from 0 for 9 to 3 out of 8. Getting his better defenders, two possession game, and also people who can afford to foul. But that's a better defense right there. Timeout by North Carolina. They only had two seconds to get the ball across the timeline from there. And Terry comes up gimpy. Yeah, what a night for Tyler Hansbrough. Absolutely. I mean, if you had to describe it, you call it aggressive. You call it relentless. He's taking the bumps. He's taking the bruises. Showing his versatility by denial and stealing and running the floor. You know, when you dream of having 40-point games, you know, you know you got to pay the price, and Tyler Hansbrough certainly has, but he's dished it out as much as he's taken it today. They've been beating on him, and there are some of the scratches he has to show for tonight's ball game. With 40 points, he is only one behind the best scoring effort of the year in the ACC. J.J. Redick has scored 41 twice. Already holds two records now, the Smith Center and the Carolina freshman record. Bobby Lewis has the school record, 49 points, back in 1965. And it was much more normal for players to go off with huge totals. But no three-point shot, no shot clock. Right. So the possessions were less, and, you know, that should give an edge to the old-timers in some respects. It's much more difficult to get the 40 back then. But, you know, Hansbrough's done it the old-fashioned way. He's done it without shooting the three-pointer. Carolina inbound with 52.9 seconds to go in the game. 27 on the shot clock. But they do get a new 10 seconds. Which is a rule I don't like. I don't think you ought to get the new 10 seconds. You've called timeout to avoid the 10-second call. I think it ought to keep counting. Well, a lot of people would agree with you, and then there are some who will say that the penalty was burning the timeout. Not enough. <laughs> Miller will go to the free throw. And order guy. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. North Carolina is at 20 of 29 free throws tonight. Big disparity there. And Miller, you would expect this guy to be a 90% free throw shooter with his touch. But he misses the first one. He's only 10 out of 15 this year. He very rarely goes to the free throw line. And that's part of it, lack of familiarity. Right. But you talk about disparity in free throws, and I'm sure that's something that is going to keep Paul Hewitt awake tonight. But I said at the beginning of the telecast that Carolina has to stay aggressive. 
in the four out of five that they've won in those four wins they've averaged 24 free throw attempts because they've been aggressive for the basket and obviously they've got 31 free throw attempts in this game Dickey tries to dribble his way in has the ball stolen by Fraser and Frederick has to commit the foul that's 20 turnovers against Georgia Tech and ultimately that is what will doom them and really you don't see as you keep watching Morrow, there's virtually no movement out of him, and he and Frederick are the only two guys that are going to be, going to be able to take that uh, three-point shot reliably, at least. Yeah, I mean, look, he's he's had a terrific, at least a terrific half. Shots didn't go down for him in the second half, and it's a it's a learning process. I mean, Morrow, just a sophomore, he's got to realize that when you're not hitting baskets, there are still other things you can do. And you can also be a threat. You've got to move. You've got to really make the defense honor you. Fraser, one out of two from the line. Georgia Tech cannot waste any time. Morrow goes inside with a little scoop shot. Hits a two. Why do you go inside? But, but also, where was that? That kind of movement. Where was that in the last five minutes? I mean, that was a nice move. Well, I'll answer my own question. You go inside because most coaches at this point with 29.2 seconds don't believe you need the three. I always have. And uh, the, the, the counterbalance to that argument is it's been very tough for them to get a three. North Carolina has defended that very well. Well, yeah, and you take what's given to you. If you can get a quick three, you can foul and you hope for some misses. You eventually, you got to hit some threes. Noel up the line. 11 points for David Noel. The senior from Durham, the only man back of the top eight scorers from a year ago. And he only averaged 3.9 last season. Hansborough, offensive rebound. Ten boards. Nice double-double, 40 and 10. Miller back door. Lost the ball, but only 13 seconds to go. It hardly matters. Frederick open for three. Passes to Clinch. Ball's out of bounds with 1.7 seconds to go. The Tar Heels of North Carolina at one point down 20. Now have a seven-point lead, and Hansborough put up some gaudy numbers tonight. The freshman and Smith Center records belong to that terrific freshman. We said it was a high-risk strategy to let Hansborough get his, and the strategy failed for Georgia Tech. Tremendous performance by North Carolina to come back from that huge hole. The final score, 82-75. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Don't forget on ESPN News, our post-game extra for Len Elmore and Doris Burke. This is Mike Patrick. Good night, everybody. The NBA next, Washington to Dallas. Here's Mark Jones.